Okay. Hi, Bob. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm good today. Good. Okay. Well, today we're going to be working on some memory strategies. So I'm going to start off and ask you a few things about your day so far. So can you tell me where are you right now? I am at um, the speech clinic. Okay. How did you get here? Well, my wife, Jane, brought me. Okay. And do you know why you're here? Um, well, we're a little worried about my memory. Good, okay. Do you know what we're working on? You kind of just answered this. Uh, yeah, Jane says that I can't remember anything these days, so she brought me here. Okay, that's right, we're working on your memory. What did you do this morning? Well, I, um... I probably ate breakfast and um I don't remember a whole lot before coming here okay do you remember what you ate for breakfast oh no I, I usually eat eggs so maybe eggs okay all right good job so now we're going to do a little bit of a grocery list recall so I'm going to say some things on a grocery list and you're gonna tell me what I said okay Okay. So first we're just going to try two. So banana and broccoli. Banana and broccoli. Good. And I'm just going to keep adding to see how many we can do. Banana, broccoli, and eggs. Banana, broccoli, and eggs. Good. Banana, broccoli, eggs, and bread. Banana, broccoli, um, eggs and bread. Good. You're, wow, you're doing a really good job. Banana, broccoli, eggs, bread, coffee. Okay, so it was a banana, broccoli, bread, and uh, coffee, I think. Good. So you just missed one. It was something that you had for, or you think you had for breakfast this morning. Do you remember? Oh, I probably had eggs for breakfast. Good. Okay. I'm going to add one more item to our grocery list. Banana, broccoli, eggs, bread, coffee, and apples. All right. There's a banana, broccoli, eggs, um... Oh, I don't remember what you said. You said apple. I did say apple. That was good. That was the last one I said. So you're just missing two. You're missing bread and coffee. Bread and coffee. So I'm going to say the whole thing again. And try to remember that. Bread and coffee. Okay? Okay. Banana, broccoli, eggs, bread, coffee, apples. All right. There's banana and um, broccoli, eggs, and uh, bread, and um, apples. Oh, you only missed one that time. It's something you drink usually in the morning. Coffee. Good job. Okay, I'm gonna do a new list, and this list is something that I would need to make a cake. So that can maybe help you remember the items on the list. Okay, well, I don't usually make the cakes. My wife does, but I'll try my best. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So this list is eggs, flour, sugar. All right, you said eggs and flour and sugar. Good, I'm gonna add some eggs, flour, sugar, butter. All right, eggs and um, flour and sugar and butter. Good, okay, I'm gonna make this one extra hard. Eggs, flour, sugar, butter, milk, and sprinkles. All right, so we've got eggs and uh, 
flour and I, I think he said sugar. Um, well, I'm trying to think of what else you would need to make a cake. Maybe some milk mm -hmm. and uh, icing. Close. You're just missing butter and sprinkles. Butter and sprinkles. Okay. So I'll say that list one more time. Eggs, flour, sugar, butter, milk, and sprinkles. All right. We've got eggs, flour, sugar, um, butter, and I think we said sprinkles. And there was one more. I don't remember what that one was. What comes from a cow? Milk. Good. Okay. One last list. So this list is cheese, onion, and garlic. Cheese and um, onions and garlic. Good. I'm going to add some cheese, onion, garlic, tomatoes. All right. We've got cheese and uh, onions and garlic and tomatoes. Good. Cheese, onion, garlic, tomatoes, potatoes. All right, we've, we've got cheese and onion and garlic and uh, potatoes and tomatoes. Good job. Okay, so that's it for our grocery list recall. Now I'm going to read you some telephone messages. And I'm going to have you recall some important points from those messages. Okay? Okay. So here's your first message. Hi, Bob. This is June from Creekside Kennels. I am just calling to let you know that your dog, Daisy, is not feeling well. Daisy's eyes are very red and she keeps pawing at her ears. I think that she may have an eye infection as well as an ear infection. Please give me a call so that you can pick her up or schedule an appointment. We close at 6.30 p.m. today. Thanks. Okay, so who called? Uh, well, someone from the kennel. Right, do you remember who, what her name was? Uh, J or G or Jane or June or something Good like that. Good that you got it, her name was June. And where did June say she worked? At the kennel. Good. What is wrong with Daisy? Well, she thinks she's sick. Right, but do you remember what kind of sickness or infection she had? I think her, uh, her ears were bothering her. Right, and there was one more thing. I'll read it to you again. Daisy is not feeling well. Daisy's eyes are very red and she keeps pawing at her ears. I think that she may have an eye infection as well as an ear infection. So what did she think was wrong with Daisy? Her eyes, her eyes and her ears. Good. And when did she say that the kennel closes today? Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't guess I remember her saying that. Okay, she said, please give me a call so that you can pick her up or schedule an appointment. We close at 6.30 p.m. today. 6, 6.30. Good. Okay. Remind me, Bob, what did you say your wife's name was again? Jane. Jane. Okay. So this next message is from your wife. She said, hi, Bob, this is your wife, Jane. I'm calling you because my prescription is ready and I need you to pick it up. My prescription is at CVS on Jones Street. Two bottles of pills and one nose spray should be available for pickup. While you are there, can you pick up some ice cream and toothpaste? Get the good toothpaste that we like. It comes in a blue bottle. So who called in this message? Jane called. And why did she call? Um, 
Well, she needs me to pick up a prescription. Right. And where is her prescription at? I think she gets them filled at the Walgreens. Mm, okay, I'm going to read the beginning one more time. Hi, Bob. This is your wife, Jane. I'm calling because my prescription is ready and I need you to pick it up. My prescription is at the CVS on Jones Street. So where is her prescription ready? Well, I don't know why she switched pharmacies, but I guess at a CVS. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure either. Okay. What kind of prescriptions did she say she needed to pick up? Well, she needed a nose spray and um, maybe some pills. Right. Do you remember how many bottles of pills she needed? I don't remember what she said. <laughs> she said, two bottles of pills and one nose spray should be available for pickup. Two bottles of pills. Good. What else did she want you to pick up while you were at CBS? Uh, the toothpaste we like. And there was one more thing. I don't remember what that was. Okay, that was ice cream. Okay, last, last question. What kind of toothpaste did she want you to get? The kind we like. Mm -hmm. She said one more thing about it. Do you remember? Oh. About the color. The, it's blue. The, co the color we like is blue. Good. Okay, so our last thing. Which we may run out of time for, we will see. Is I'm going to read you a newspaper article and then ask you some questions about it. Okay. And I think you're really, really gonna love this one, Bob. <laughs> okay. It's titled, Lululemon buys at-home exercise startup mirror for $500 million. Okay. I don't know what Lululemon is, but I'm ready to learn. Athletic apparel maker, Lululemon, said Monday it's acquiring at-home exercise startup, The Mirror, for $500 million as Americans remain leery about returning to public gyms amid the coronavirus pandemic. The deal is part of Lululemon's plan to expand beyond just selling yoga and other exercise apparel for both men and women, and suggests that the Canadian workout wear company is betting we won't return to gyms anytime soon as coronavirus cases surge across the U.S. The acquisition of Mir is an exciting opportunity to build upon that vision, enhance our digital and interactive capabilities, and deepen our roots in the sweat life, Lululemon CEO Calvin McDonald said in a statement. The move comes as Americans have been forced by gym closers to work out at home during the pandemic and even substitute their young children for kettlebell, kettlebells. Lululemon on his website features a section that guides visitors through at-home workouts. While some gyms have reopened with new safety protocols in place, Many fitness enthusiasts remain hesitant about returning to shared facilities over coronavirus concerns. Mirror, which launched in 2018, sells a $1,500 interactive mirror that streams live and on-demand workout classes. It also offers one-on-one -on -one personal training services. The deal builds on a partnership between the two companies that began in the mid-2019 when Lululemon made an initial investment in Mirror. It also marks Lululemon's first acquisition. Once the deal closes, Mirror will operate as a standalone company within Lululemon, which is based in Vancouver, British Columbia. Okay. So, which company is this article about? Um, it's about an athletic company. Good, and I know that one's tricky because you said you'd never heard of it before, but it started with an L. Do you remember what it was? Oh, uh, Lulu something. Good, Lululemon. And what did Lululemon do in this article? They bought a mirror. Good, they did. And what was so important about the mirror for them? Do you remember? Um, well, no, I, I think they may be investing in it. Right. So it allowed people to work out at home and get workout classes from home, which was important during the pandemic. And how much did they buy it for? A lot of money. I think that, did you say it sold for $1,000 and 500 Close, but it's a, it's a bigger number. Think big. They bought the whole company. Oh, I don't know. Maybe millions? Right. They bought it for $500 million. So, 
Good job. Thanks for working hard today. Hey, Bob, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Jane said that you have been um, struggling with some memory stuff. Is that true? Yes, I have. I've been having trouble remembering things. All right. Well, today we are going to talk about your grandkids and some things that um, you might want to remember when dealing with them or think about in the future so uh, that we can work on applying those to your life. So tell me about your grandkids. I hear you have two. Is that true? I do have two. One is a boy and one is a girl. And I hear that uh, the boy has a special birthday coming up, one that's pretty important in high school. Is that true? That is true. I can't remember the exact number, but I do know that he is in high school. So it's the birthday that you get your license. Do you know which one that is? Okay, so that would be 16. 16, yes. And uh, what is your grandson's name? My grandson's name is Tom. Tom, perfect. So today we are going to talk about Tom and his 16th birthday because along with a license, most 16-year-olds usually get a vehicle of some type. That way they can drive themselves around. So um, Tom has requested specifically for a truck of some type. So I just want you to think about all the different types of trucks there are out there and tell me what kind of trucks you or uh, Tom's, your, your daughter could buy for Tom. Um, do you mean like brand or? Yeah, so. Um, or. Like, yes. What, how many different kinds of trucks are there? Well, <laughs> when you say that again, it cut out. Uh, okay, you're frozen, Bob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, different kinds of trucks are there that that um, bought, that are available to Tom? So when he's truck shopping, there are so many different types of trucks, and I just want you to see how many different types of trucks you can think of. Okay. Well, Bob is not a huge truck person, but if I were Bob, <laughs> I could think of like a Ford. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. Which I feel like is big. Mm -hmm. Um, Dodge. Yeah, there's Dodge trucks, definitely. Mm hmm. Toyota makes trucks, mm -hmm. right? Good. Yeah. That that's about all I can think of. Okay, so you've got a Ford, you've got a Dodge, a Toyota. There's another a really big brand of truck. Um. They have all of the commercials, um, and it, the symbol is like, a, it's almost like a plus sign. Do you know what I'm talking about? What does it start with? It starts with a CH, a sh sound. Oh, like a Chevy? A Chevy, yes, a Chevrolet. So there's a Ford. There's Dodge, Toyota, Chevrolet. Good job. So um, I'm gonna just tell you a few more and then I wanna see if you can remember them back. Okay. So um, you could get a GMC. There's a GMC. Um, Toyota, that's a great option too. There is um, Nissan. Nissan actually makes trucks. Um, and Volvo makes trucks. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I did not know that, Bob. But, um, and then a Honda. Honda makes trucks too. So we said a GMC, a Nissan, a Honda, and a Volvo. Can you, can you tell those back to me? GMC, Nissan, and a Volvo. Yep, there was one more that we were thinking of a GMC, Nissan, Volvo, and then there's one that starts with an H. Honda. A Honda, that's right. Okay, Bob, so we just named eight total trucks 
that um, Tom could maybe go shopping for when he is truck shopping. So let's see if we can remember all of those. GMC, Nissan. Good. Honda, Volvo. Mm -hmm. And Ford. And Ford, that's right. So that was five. So the other three, I think you might have actually said all on your own at the first. So um, do you remember what those other three were? Chevy. Good, there's a Chevy, yeah. Dodge. Good, Dodge. I don't remember the last one. Um, it was a... Jeep. Was it a Toyota? It was maybe a Toyota, yes. <laughs> Great job. All right, Bob, so... Um, if you had your choice of what Tom would, what kind of truck Tom would drive, what would your top three choices be? Ford, because I'm definitely the most familiar with Ford. Hadn't heard of some of the other ones making trucks before. Um, Dodge. Mm -hmm. And which one did you say had a lot of the commercials? It, that was the Chevrolet. So, and then the Chevrolet. Okay, so the Chevrolet, the Dodge, and the Ford. And have you ever driven any of these trucks, Tom, Bob? No. My wife usually drives me places. Well, what about before the stroke? Were you driving yourself? Yes, I was before, but not a truck. Okay, just a, an SUV or a car, maybe? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, um... Now that we have talked about Tom and his birthday, um, what about your granddaughter? She also has a birthday coming up pretty soon, but she's a little bit younger, so we wouldn't be looking at cars for her. Do you remember her birth? What how old she's gonna be? Is it five? Close, yeah. Jane said she was actually going to be six this year. So she's five now, so she'll be six uh, in a month or so. And Jane has said that she's at just asking for a new pair of tennis shoes. So that's a lot cheaper than what Tom is getting. Um, but I was thinking that maybe you could pick out some tennis shoes. So are you familiar with tennis shoes, Bob? Do you wear tennis shoes? I think so. I wear New Balances. New Balance, yeah. So does my dad, Bob. <laughs> so, Grandpa 2000s. So let's think about all of the different kinds of sneakers and tennis shoes that there are that we could get for your granddaughter. So you said New Balances. Can you think of three more? Nike. Nike, that's a big one, yep. Reebok. Reebok, yes. That's all I can think of. Okay, so we got Nike and Reebok. Is that right? And New Balance. And New Balance. So those are three. So I'm going to just tell you two more, and we'll see if we can remember those, okay? So there's Adidas. And there is Skechers. So we have Adidas, Skechers, New Balance, Reebok, and Nike. Can you remember those for me? Adidas, Skechers, New Balance, and Nike. Oh, that was four. You're so close. You almost, you, you just forgot one. So I'm going to read them off to you one more time. Adidas, Skechers, Reebok, Nike, and New Balance. Can you say those for me again? Adidas, Skechers, Nike, New Balance, and Reebok. Very good, Bob. Let's call you Tom again. Um, that is okay. So I am going to. 
tell you two more. I'm going to add two more on there and see if you can remember those, okay? Okay. So we have, I'll write this down so I don't forget. So we have Adidas, Reebok, Nike, Skechers, New Balance. And then the two that I'm going to add are Asics and Brooks. Can you remember those for me? Brooks, Asics, Nike, New Balance, Adidas. Oh, we're just missing two. You are so close. So we had Asics, Brooks, Adidas, Nike, New Balance. And then the two that we're missing, one starts with an R. I think that it was one of the first ones you said. Do you remember? Reebok. Good. And then the next one starts with an S. Do you remember what that one is? Skechers. Good, very good. So since um, your granddaughter is just going to be six, I would say she probably was going to want one of the Nikes, Adidas, or Reeboks. Those are, those are probably about her um, age range. What kind do you think you would get her, Bob? Probably Nike. Nike, yeah, I think she would like those. All right, good job. Thanks for talking to me about your grandkids. So um, we just have a few more minutes left. And speaking of your grandkids, um, Jane said that they may be coming to stay the weekend with you guys soon. So um, I was thinking about something that you might make them for lunch. Is there anything that you might make them for lunch, like maybe sandwiches? Yeah, sometimes I make them sandwiches. Yeah, do you uh, make them turkey sandwiches or peanut butter sandwiches? Well, the youngest one likes peanut butter and jelly, but the oldest one, he likes ham and cheese, I think. Yeah, so the youngest one likes peanut butter and jelly, and then the oldest likes ham and cheese. So um, your youngest one who likes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches uh, Jane said that she has um, an allergy. Do you remember what that is? I don't think I can remember her allergy. Yeah, so she has celiacs, which um, that means that she can't eat a specific type of food. Do you know what that is? Oh, right. Is that gluten? Yes, yeah, so she is gluten-free. So um, when we're making a sandwich, we have to be pretty aware of somebody being gluten-free. So can you tell me something that we would do differently when making her sandwich? Maybe give her special bread or something without gluten in it. Yeah, that's right. So bread obviously has gluten. So when we're making a sandwich for somebody that's gluten-free, we have to make sure that we have the special kind of gluten-free bread. So if you did not have that at your house and she wanted a sandwich, um, what would you do? I would probably make her something other than a sandwich. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I was hoping you would say. As, uh, if she is at your house and she's asking for a sandwich and you have that gluten-free bread, then that's a perfect option. But if she doesn't have it, then um, you'd probably have to make something else for her that does not have gluten in it. I almost. I said could that. also ask her what else she prefers other than the sandwich because we didn't have any gluten-free bread. That's right, Bob. That is good thinking. All right. Well, thank you for working so hard today. I will see you next time. Okay. Have a good day.